Jordan. Authorities in North Carolina have arrested two 18-year-olds and charged them with first-degree murder. They are being held without bail. Cumberland County's chief detective says they killed Jordan in an apparent robbery when he pulled off the road to rest. Police say the men tried to cover their tracks because they knew their victim was Michael Jordan's father. They say the men took the elder Jordan's body to South Carolina where they dumped it in a river. Police found Jordan's body there on August 3rd with a gunshot wound to the chest. I give Daniel the opportunity to address the camera. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Daniel. Uh, I've been locked up since I was 18 years old. Uh, over half of my life, I'm now 43. And I was locked up for a crime that you know, James Jordan lost his life. I had nothing to do with him losing his life. I want to speak directly to the Jordan family and say to you that I know what you're going through, what you've been through. I've been through the same thing. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of us have. And Although I'm seeking for justice for myself, I'm also seeking for justice for you. Uh, you deserve to know the truth. Uh, you deserve that. And my family deserves it as well. Of NBA superstar Michael Jordan says he's innocent. James Jordan died in 1993. Andre Green and his friend Larry Demery were both charged with murder. Demery testified Green pulled the trigger, killing Jordan in the car where he'd been sleeping. And of course, you know, I'm pissed to a certain degree because I know that I've been here for 17 years. You know, for something that I like, you know, saying really didn't have nothing to do with. Green says a new report reveals mistakes at North Carolina's. 35 year old is trying to get his case back in court and has filed a motion on his own. First of all, you have uh, been withholding uh, potentially exculpatory evidence. The latest development in Green's case hinges on blood evidence. Back in 1996, an investigator testified she found a small amount of blood in the passenger seat of Jordan's car. The latest report reveals the crime lab only found indications of blood during an initial test, and four follow-up tests were inconclusive. Green's case is one of nearly 200 under review. Other mistakes at the lab have led authorities to call for a criminal investigation. You already see me walking out of these doors, and that's what you know, inspired me and kept me going. So this is just something else that pretty much confirms that I'm on the right on the path. Green says he was not present when Jordan died, but has admitted he helped dispose of the body. He's also admitted to using Jordan's car and taking his jewelry. Son, Michael Jordan, has declined to comment. As did the rest of the world, I um, felt such a, I don't know, a sense of loss when your father was murdered. I know you did. Really hadn't quite understood the reasoning for that. And I you know say it hasn't sunk in yet? No. No. I still think about it a lot. Mm -hmm. Would you want to ever say to them why? No, because I don't want to know. You don't? No because it probably would hurt me even more just to know their reasons because if it is, it's gonna to be totally meaningless yeah. to the reason and um, it's better that I don't know, you know. How are you handling the grieving process? I know I've done many shows where people say time heals. It hasn't been a long time. And one of the things you say in Rare Air, I was moved when I read it, you say you always would look to see if your family was in the stands, your wife, and if Juanita wasn't in the stands, she'd hear from you. Thing to me, I've heard you talk about it, not a lot, but even in the book where you say, my father who passed, and I always think, I mean, I know he had to pass, but I think he was murdered. And the fact that he was murdered is, is, is a searing kind of pain. I mean, have you... Have you dealt with that? Have you accepted the fact he was murdered? No, because I'm, I'm a very optimistic person to a sense that I don't look at the real bad part of it. I look that no matter what happened to my father, he's not here. Yeah. So he's passed to me. Mm -hmm. um, I want to look at it in a good sense. Hi, you. Go into detail, but this is a complete switch from his stance on Tuesday when he told a Raleigh TV station that Green was the trigger man. The slaying perhaps occurred at the hands of third parties, not Mr. Demery, not Mr. Green. So are you saying that, that your, your client and Mr. Green may have stumbled across a corpse? There may very well be some evidence that that would be the case, yes ma'am. North Carolina authorities maintain there is no mistake and that, quote, we've got the right people.
tests on a 38 caliber gun believed to be the murder weapon could link the suspects to the killing. Results of the test are expected next week. See here with sports, and Michael Jordan seems to be dealing with the tragedy of his father's death quite well. Yeah, he says he and his family are coping very well in the aftermath of the, uh, his father's tragic death. And uh, Michael Jordan faced the cameras in a packed news conference this morning. But the media was asked to limit their questions to the benefit tournament he is playing in this weekend in suburban Washington, D.C. You know, in terms of your, well, I'm not going to say your involvement, but how much did you know about that whole situation? Because Jordan himself was a, a serious gambler. Yes. You actually referred to him as a degenerate gambler. He's a big gambler, big. I mean, Michael gambles on everything from what my experience is, what I was told, and people that know him, yes. Okay. Did you personally know him at all or no? I met him. I met him uh, actually at a, a, an NBA deal that we had, an event, yeah. Okay. So he had this serious gambling problem, and then his father gets murdered. And there was always speculation if one had something to do with the other. From what you know, Again, I don't have first-hand knowledge of this, but being that I was working with the NBA at that time, um, I was told two things. One, that he was told to leave the NBA around the time that his father got murdered because stories were about to come out and there was a lot of heat on the fact that because of Michael's gambling habit, his father paid the price. And the NBA didn't want the, uh, uh, the press, so they asked him to leave for a while. That's when he went to play baseball. And then when things settled down, he came back. The plan was always, from what I was told, uh, for him to come back. Now again, I heard this from a source I believe was, uh, was pretty knowledgeable, somebody I knew pretty well, inside the NBA. Um, so for me, it's secondhand information, but I thought it was reliable. And then putting it all together, knowing that you know Michael did have this uh, gambling issue, uh, that it's very possible that that could happen. So you're saying there's a, a strong possibility that his father was murdered because he wasn't paying back his gambling debts. I don't know. Again, I can't be specific. I don't know if it was a 14. I agree. Okay. And the family of Jordan, they actually waited three weeks after he was missing to actually report a missing person. And then seven days after they actually found the Lexus. So some time had passed between the murder and them actually connecting the dots and figuring out that this was James Jordan Sr. So you get arrested and you get questioned, interrogated for like seven hours. Is that correct? Yeah, they, um, yeah, it was, it, it may have been enough just thinking, okay, well, I'm looking for a five card. It got, you know, five star rims in it. There it is. And he made a side of that guy, like, I really don't know. The only thing I know is what he told me initially, and then what he told me before I got locked up, because I kept asking him questions, like, like, like something like, where was the guy gun at? Like, why could, could we find this guy gun? Because we did look out there where the body was at to see, you know, it's like, I want to see, man, where's the gun at? Because I'm thinking, okay, if there's no gun out here, somebody may have even gotten a gun. And I just, I think, you know, like, deep inside, but I, I felt like something was off with, with what he was telling me, but I didn't really know how to analyze it at that young age. Um... So, you know, that's, you know, that's pretty much, like, how that happened. You know, after it happened, there was the, the conspiracy theory that somehow Michael Jordan's father was killed because of Jordan's gambling. Is there any truth to that at all? I don't know, man, no. And see, this is, and this is where, you know, people, this is, this is, see, this is the problem with this, right, is that that summer, when, see, when I found out that the car was connected to Michael Jordan, I, like I said, I really didn't know as much as everybody else because I was in prison where, you know, you didn't have, like, you know, you didn't have access to the telephone really a lot. You didn't have access to a television. There's no cable, no ESPN. But, you know, everybody talking, kids talking, and, oh, man, you know, Michael Jordan, some guy got killed, and then Mike Mayo, you know, whatever. Um, so when we were arrested, the police definitely was saying things like that. Like, they were saying those things to me to say, yeah, man, like, to say we was involved in a hit. I'm like, you know, I know what you're talking about. Um, but I've never, ever seen anything that would convince me, right, convince me, Danny Green, under my standard of proof, uh, which is very high now because of what I've been through, and I know what it's like to fall to the I've never seen nothing to suggest that. And when I was in the county jail, when I first 
talked about what really happened against my, you know, you know, your people advising me, bro, you shouldn't talk about this case until you go to trial. And I'm like, listen, these people talking about Michael Jordan, bro. And like, you know, like every other kid, you know, I'm a Michael Jordan fan, not because back then, not really so much because of the basketball, because I, I didn't watch basketball. But, you know, the sneakers and the fact that there's this black. Well, you know, Michael says that, Michael, the team, Michael has told you this is their year, Andy. So for all the parents out there, was there one point when you thought that Michael was going to be as great a player as he is? No, there was no way you could tell. You know, I always thought Michael would play baseball. Of course, he had that year that he, he grew so much, and it's just been a joy watching him develop into the player that the world can see today. All right, hopefully we can watch him all the way through the playoffs. I hope so. If he do, I'll be right there. I'll be his number one fan all the way through.